Hello and welcome back to another guide for Aliens Dark Descent. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look at the classes and the question of what is the best SWAT that you can deploy in Aliens Dark Descent. My games are concise, information rich and I have no BS, no repetition. So let's buckle up and dive into the question. The game comes with five different classes and compared to other games they are not as different. The game prides itself of having kind of a core of 70% of the abilities of the characters being very much the same and then there is a little bit of a flavor of individuality. For starters we do have the sergeant which is a class that focuses specifically around command points and quicker regeneration of command points. You could also call him a supporter in a sense. You do have the medic, which is a true supporter, allowing for more hit points for the entire SWAT, the ability to um, revive people from a coma and the ability to additionally infuse stress reduction whenever healing. So it's kind of a more efficient healer, although other characters can heal just as well. They just don't have the add on effects. You then have the gunner, which is potentially the heaviest the DPS class and the only one who has an access to the smart gun. It allows everybody to more efficiently suppress fire as in the enemies slow down further and it yields the most damage just thanks to their gun. Then we do have the recon, which is kind of a mix of a sniper and a stealth artist, but they are not really stealthy. The recon can si uh, silent uh, snipe enemies and will have infrared goggles, which allow to highlight all of the nearby aliens. So that is their SWAT ab ability. And finally, we do have the Tekker, which is kind of the fifth class uh, with a unique feature of the tactical drone. The tactical drone comes in three iterations and depending on how deep you want to quote unquote skill into that, the drone can either just scout, start to weld doors and interact with objects or become its own small weapon platform. And that the one minute summary gives you already an introduction into everything you need to know around the difference of the classes. Everything else is pretty much core. So when you ask the question, what is the most efficient layout? Let me preface that before going into it. For starters, there is no such thing as the most efficient layout. It very much depends uh, what you want to achieve with your SWAT. So if you want to go in stealthy, there is certainly one layout that works better than others. If you want to go in only guns blazing, certainly other layouts work better in that particular case. However, I don't want to keep it as general as that. So let's go into two examples. If I was to build a team for a specific stealthy mission, then I would definitely make sure that there is a recon available because they do have the silenced sniper and are the only ones that can use it. I would potentially go with uh, two to even three sergeants to have the most beneficial uh, com command point regeneration. And then I would either fill it up with a medic or a gunner for the emergency situations when you either need uh, stress relief healing or when you need suppression fire and just DPS. This is a very stealthy oriented uh, gameplay where you're heavily relying on the command point structure. If you want to go in guns blazing, I personally uh, think that a combination of having at least two gunners, two sergeants and maybe one medic is a very solid all around uh, good DPS team that can uh, resist stress very well. Sergeants from level six onwards can uh, give you the ability to ignore stress completely. So that in itself is helpful. And the medic just increases the overall survivability. So you might want to use either of these two extremes if that uh, suits your game style. Other than that, you can just as well play with a balanced team or I, for instance, uh, used two sergeants, a medic, a uh, gunner and a scout uh, for my main playthrough, uh, which worked very well together. Let's talk about the level up of each of uh, the individual classes. Since I already talked a lot about the classes, 
I still want to talk through uh, the leveling system. So the leveling system consists out of common and class specific uh, attributes. The common attributes are coming with each level. As uh, you can uh, see at level 10, which is the highest level, you do have 10 of these common attributes. They are random and you can select uh, one out of three. Generally speaking, my experience is that Unbreakable Will is an incredibly efficient way of uh, playing the game because it uh, gives the ability to ignore tired. Equally, any form of trauma negation just makes your game easier. So if you do have that, it also just makes the game solidly more playable. Other than that, I have almost put all of uh, the points into offensive items or when they weren't available into survivability. So namely, sharpshooter is a very good uh, skill for every single marine. Your marine typically starts with an accuracy of 35% and, accuracy, and sharpshooter raises that accuracy by five per level. So on the highest level, that would be 15. That alone, if you skill thrice into that uh, tree, would almost double the accuracy of your uh, marine. On top of that, um, if you can afford it, uh, you might want uh, to get a higher uh, disemerance uh, chance. I show that here, that I is the skill. Uh, the Marine can land critical hits and disemberance um, starts with 13%, then is 25% and then up to 40%. Uh, Disembered um, aliens will start to crawl on the floor and are effectively taken out. So it's almost a one shot kill, which is very, very good. Whenever that wasn't available, I started to either use Hardened or Tough, uh, which increases health points, health, health points and armor respectively. So that is the common attributes. In terms of upgrades, uh, the upgrades are class specific. There is a pool of normal upgrades that every single Marine can take. Uh, you can uh, use them. Let's take a fresh Marine um, down here who does not have any upgrades. So independent of each class, the last four are always the same. Aiming side, which increases accuracy and sticks with uh, sharpshooter, I would recommend uh, taking that. Ammo bag, which is in my perspective unnecessary. Pouches, which increases the amount of medical supplies and tools that you can have, I would recommend that. And wider clip, when you do have enough extra skills to spare, wider clip definitely makes a difference because it simply allows you to not reload as often. It is, in a sense, uh, as good as quick hands. You don't need to reload, you have more uptime, and you simply deal more damage in the combat. So from the standard ones, I would recommend taking uh, pouches first, then aiming, and then wider clip. For the class-specific ones, which typically are three, let's go through each of the classes individually, and let me give you an indication of what I would recommend in terms of skilling. Start with the recon uh, first. The recon does have uh, the ability uh, to have infrared goggles, which I would uh, take second, only second to the silencer because uh, the silencer allows your sniper to kill without being notified. So it's the silencer prior to infrared goggles. The third one is a map wide scanner that costs tools and in my perspective is not worth it. So those two skills I would recommend taking. In terms of uh, the sergeant, uh, the radio backpack and the advanced radio backpack by far are the most important items for him. The one gives an extra command point, the other one gives a faster command point. And as an addendum for common traits, there is one common trait that uh, is called teamwork. And teamwork in particular is something that I would suggest to take whenever possible. People that do have teamwork, if you have two uh, people with teamwork in the team, they will uh, be able to uh, give an additional uh, command point. So that is generally something that I would go for as well. All right, so next up, Medic. Let's go through that really uh, quickly. Medic's uh, best ability in my perspective are Comet Drugs, which do not stack. It is one extra health points for everybody, so that is really good. I personally liked Reanimator Kit as well because coma can happen from time to time and allows uh, you to take your Marines out of it. So I would skill both of those and skip the stress relief. Then um, we do have the Gunner. 
uh, which in my perspective, the most important one is the high impact rounds, which is a, a group wide buff that allows to increase the effect of su uh, suppressing fire. That in itself is good. Um, the advanced tracking system, uh, which basically gives an additional 10 points of accuracy when you are clicking on a single enemy, aka kill that bastard, is second um, uh, in the individual skills and the separate sentry gun is not worth it. I have tried it, doesn't really do any good, so I would suggest you skip it. The DPS is definitely not worth it, slash not even increasing. And finally, the Tekker, in my perspective, the class that needs the most rework and which I have in the least um, amount of SWAT lo uh, loadouts, the Tekker comes with uh, three upgrades for the tactical drone. I've tested uh, upgrade one and uh, also upgrade two and three. I think the tactical drone can be good. You can, it's definitely serviceable to work with that. And since the core frame of the Tekker is a Marine, it's not a bad soldier, but the drone itself doesn't do enough. Additionally, the Tekker is quote unquote, the only one who can hack specifically locked doors. Um, but the problem is there is a common trait called smart S and unless what, uh, uh, as, as, as soon as one of your characters has that, the attacker becomes obsolete because his kind of unique proposition that he can hack these doors is essentially not really helpful anymore. So the tactical drone in itself and no group buff really leaves the attacker a little bit stranded in what he can, uh, can do. I would go into tactical drone once and then elsewhere just take all of the other upgrades because frankly they are better than what the class can offer um, elsewise. So with that being said, there is a couple of summaries for this guide. Number one, there is no such thing as the best uh, team. However, if you run with two or three sergeants, you can abuse the command point structure quite well. I personally like dual sergeant in all classes except tacker as a compromise in running in it. Secondly, you want to go for offensive skills because when uh, the aliens attack, you want to kill them as fast as possible to disengage. Thirdly, you want to try to maximize your command points whenever possible and you want to, if possible, go for unbreakable will in order to just ignore the tired effects. Also gives you the option to use the intense trainings room and then essentially uh, bow out of the trainings room without being exhausted. So that's really it. That's all you need to know around SWAT building and building efficient characters. Crisp and precise. I hope you liked it. If you enjoy these kinds of guides, leave a comment down below and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.